Hello and welcome back to another Bolo vs. Video. The video series where I, Pit, the big, chonky, armored defenders of mankind, the biggest, baddest tanks to ever exist in all of science fiction, against any sci-fi franchise I, or you, damn well feel like it. And this week, our match is suggested to us by subscriber Nikki Design Solutions and Gaming, who wanted me to pit the whole Concordiad of Man against Covenant from Bungie's Halo franchise, because fuck you 343, you've done more to shit on the Halo franchise than fans of G.G. Allen. And if you don't know who that is, look it up. Now, you're going to have to bear with me for this one. You may hear a little bit of page ruffling in the background, because you hear that? That's me beating my desk with a giant brick of paper that this script is made of. So, this match is extraordinarily different than any other battle we've done to date, and you're going to see why real quick. Normally, we focus on a singular battlefield, and war is really only on the ground because, well, that's what bolos do. And that's the main focus of this whole channel, apparently. Go me. But I digest. So, again, I stated that normally I focus on a singular battlefield and wars on the ground. We're going to skew that in favor of letting these two factions go head to head in total war. Now, I'm not only going to focus on ground battles, but fleet actions as well. Because, well... Even though it's not overly mentioned, it is actually documented fairly well how the Concordiat fleet behaves and their tactics and weapons. So, we can just infer a little bit from that. This is going to be a galaxy-wide conflict based on their empires, and I'll lay it all out in the rules in the head, but you'll see why. I'm going to use the Halo universe for this one. But I'm going to replace the boring old anemic UNSC with the Concordiat of Man circa 2525, roughly around first contact in the Halo universe. The reason I'm doing this is for no particular specific reason other than the Concordiat of Man doesn't really have a particular order of battle or amounts of ship fleets, and there's actually data for the UNSC, so I'm just going to basically copy past over. And for another reason is because even in canon, the specific order of battle for the Concordiat fleet composition is only mentioned realistically in two stories in terms of size and makeup, and that's in A Time to Kill and Old Soldiers. So for the sake of argument and to give them the Covenant a sporting chance, we'll, we'll just copy past over. And I guess it, even if you look at it from a different perspective, if I pitted uh, the Covenant against the Concordiat even at its peak, a single battle group for the Concordiat would wipe the floor with the entire Covenant without breaking a sweat. A combat team of even Mark 25s would provide sufficient orbital standoff to render the Covenant military impotent, and they wouldn't even be able to get in close enough to do glassing runs on a planet. It's just the way the bowls are written. And let's look at it this way. Again, something like that just doesn't make for a very long video or anything really fun if we all know how it's going to turn out just looking at the thumbnail. But where was I? Right, fairness. So the Concordiat will be during their golden age of expansion. So to transplant the Concordiat of Man onto UNSC gives them roughly 3,100 ships and 800 colony worlds. However, the military doctrine is going to be obviously centered around the Dino Chrome Brigade instead of Marine Expeditionary Units of the UNSC. And I think that should bring just enough balance to this engagement so it doesn't last about 12 seconds overall. And so before we begin this epic battle, let's break down our combatants, shall we? All right, first up we're going to look at is going to be the Concordiat of Man, which was formed roughly in the early years of the 22nd century. The Concordiat of Man, or the Concordiat as it was called in later years, for lack of better terminology, is a form of republic, largely democratic in nature, but affords considerable leeway for individual colonies and systems to self-govern provided preconditioned terms are met. Actually kind of similar to the Imperium of Man from Warhammer 40k. But given how much that Warhammer 40k is stolen from maybe the franchise, maybe I start to wonder. And before all the 40k nerds start rage clicking at me in the comments section, let's carry on. Most human controlled worlds possess planetary defense forces consisting of first and second line hardware capable of resisting minor invasions or engaging in holding actions until sector reinforcements arrive. Also add to that, most colonies have anti-orbital missiles for defense. So despite being the numerically smaller force, the technological edge maintained by the Concordiat should more than offset any disadvantage in numbers, especially given the Concordiat's demonstrated ability to move to a war footing in production levels really quickly. And Concordiat military formations, as mentioned previously, are generally centered around the Dinochrome Brigade and armored combat, primarily bolos, but we'll also discuss fleet as well. So let's look at the fleet first, considering most of our engagements are going to be fleet in this match. 
Uh, due to a lack of lore, we're going to infer a great deal in regards to fleet composition. We'll keep classes, numbers of ships, but the Concordia possesses shields on par or exceeding Covenant equivalent depending on the class size. They also possess a devastating firepower in comparison to their Halo contemporaries. Battery fire for Concordia at ships is the 50 centimeter Hellboard directed plasma gun, as well as possessing a devastating array of missile systems. Enhanced fusion warheads, relativistic kill warheads being the deadliest overall. Now, the Hellbore guns are capable of firing every four seconds with a force of 1.5 megatons per second per shot. And that's a lot of destructive force aimed at a very small area in comparison to, like, say, a standard nuclear warhead, which spreads out rather quickly. And the relativistic kill projectiles are essentially single use MAC guns on steroids affixed to space borne ship to ship missiles. And the PDF systems on the ships also exceed that of Covenant systems as they're capable of actually tracking relativistic kill uh, weapons in lore as well. Now, they possess roughly the same speed FTL as the UNSC, but for fairness sake, more or less only. Other than that, the Roger Large changes to the offense and defense. The Concordia Man operates tactically and strategically similar to the UNSC, at least in terms of fleet movements and how they would deploy their forces. During this era, the primary bolo for the Concordia is the Mark 15 Bravo Mike Resartis, first and uh, first deployed in year 2396. However, during this period, considerable effort is being put into the final testing and deployment of the Mark 15R horrendous variant. Given Concordiat Force's low orbit standoff capability, between that and the 50 centimeter Hellbore and the four 20 centimeter howitzers, four breech loading mortars, and 12 laser infinite repeater batteries, plus anti-personnel point defense weapons, the Covenant are going to be hard pressed on the back foot to compete against the level of mobile firepower that Concordia can bring to any ground engagement. And we know it. The Scarab don't stand a chance. Well, my stars and garters, children, that was just a little tad detailed now, wasn't it? But you wouldn't expect anything less from me, so let's look at our opponent, the Covenant. There's considerable lore surrounding the history of the Covenant, first founded in 862 BCE, and it's more of a martial and religious union between the Sangili and the Sanchium as an initial start. Placing the Sanchium at the head of their organization and the elites as the head of their military apparatus. All bound by the worship of ancient technology left behind by the forerunners. They spent the next 3,800 odd years doing what totalitarian religious orders do best. Um, deus vaulting across the galaxy, brutally subjugating every race they came across. Zen, if you want a more detailed breakdown of Covenant history, lore... Um, two YouTubers I recommend, either Installation Zero Zero or Hidden Xperia. These guys cover Halo stuff pretty much almost exclusively, and they're damn good at it. I love their shit. Uh, they're both top tier, but to belabor the obvious, in lore, the Covenant are imitative, not innovative, meaning they produce no indigenous technology independently. Instead, their tech is all derived from Forerunner technology, repaired and repurposed by the Huragak, ancient Forerunner living computers, or crazy autistic gas bags that can fix, reverse engineer, or modify any technology in known existence. Yeah, this is the Covenant's primary advantage in universe and the biggest disadvantage, meaning if the Covenant lose them, they are pretty much screwed because no one can effectively repair or even understand how their technology works. In my opinion, that's a pretty monstrous weakness and one that's going to be eminently exploitable by the Concordia if they figure it out. And realistically, the second major flaw in the Covenant is the Covenant itself. The very nature of it makes it unstable. It's an alliance that's extremely prone to fracturing, provided the appropriate pressure can be applied. Their military is centered around fast light infantry, with medium and direct fire support, augmented with fast light scout units, and occasionally uh, low atmosphere orbital support or orbital support. Now, on the ground, no Covenant Union stands a uh, snowball's chance in hell of even second against second line Concordia technology. Even their vaunted scarabs or hunters don't have the range to even threaten an unshielded bolo, let alone one that's fully powered up and ready to roll. Even relying on close air support from warships will be untenable, as even 25 centimeter hellbores will peel the shields right off even a CCS class battle cruiser and punch holes clean through that ship with just breathtaking ease. Uh, 35 and 50 centimeters will be able to do so even from low orbit. And needless to say, the Covenant militarily are going to be facing resistance unlike anything they've ever encountered before in their entire history. And it's going to be hilarious. Let's get into it. So guys, it's going to be one hell of a fight. 
Let's establish these ground rules. No super weapons. All four running mega structures are out of play. No FTL combat. I know both franchises can and have engaged in combat in hyperspace, but it's too unpredictable on battle graphs and I just don't have that kind of patience or time. That should be about good given both franchises have very similar real world physics governing their uh, movement. So Concordia victory is going to be based on them capturing or destroying covenant leadership or total and military government collapse of the covenant. The covenant, basically simple. All human worlds classed. So, all right, let's do this. Okay, so here's how our scenario is going to go. For the sake of ease and story crafting, I'm just going to straight up steal Halo's first contact scenario, where a lone world goes silent and the Concordiat task force sent to investigate is rebuffed. The returning ship's sensor data gives extensive specs and scans of the CPV class destroyer that's glassed the planet. The entire Concordiat is mobilized immediately. Production moves to war footing. The first probing task forces sweep Covenant fleets aside with absolute ease. However, the Concordiat knows that the Covenant is massive. The data stolen from Covenant wrecks indicates Covenant space and navy is five times larger than the Concordiats alone. The Covenant response, however, is blunt and almost overwhelming. The Covenant, absolutely stymied at the technological disparity they face, want to end this campaign quickly. They commit 40% of their immediate available fleet strength and 70% of their ground force to the push. Across a front of several hundred light years, they slam into Concordiat defenses and begin their invasions. And immediately start absorbing casualties at an unbelievable, unsustainable rate, losing literally every ground engagement and achieving only Pyrrhic victories in naval engagements when they outnumber Concordiat forces 10 to 1. The Covenant, after one year, begin to consider they will lose if they persist. So they switch to defensive strategy, attempting to keep as much of their spaceborne assets hidden as possible from superior Concordiat forces long enough to rebuild their fleet and then attack again. This proves kind of fruitless as Concordiat AI tech makes absolute short work of Covenant encryption, and their entire empire is able to be tracked and monitored by Concordiat forces at pretty much all times. The Concordiat separate cut down all covenant resistance over the next year, forcing them back all the way to high charity. Every species homeworld has either been invaded and occupied or to a lesser degree, subdued. A little longer than two years after this conflict has started, the covenant have been driven all the way back to high charity. The Concordiat surrounds it, having laid the covenant fleets into absolute scrap beneath them. They hand the covenant one simple request hand over the prophets in the San Shayum, or they'll destroy High Charity and burn every world on the way out of Covenant space. The Sangili oblige by tossing every San Shayum straight out an airlock. Human victory. Little over two years. That's a pretty short, brutal war on galactic scales. And one that the Covenant lost so resoundingly that it was almost embarrassing. Well, hell, it was embarrassing. Oh my god! <laughs> He didn't stand a chance. The Covenant never really stood a realistic chance in hell. Concordiat's too quick to innovate new technology, strategy, and outproduce superior war machines. The Bolos completely negate any Covenant tactical advantage, low orbital support, and their machines. No Covenant ground unit could even come close to matching even an old Mark III Bolo. Like, it's just a different style of war and a much more larger, brutal style of war. The Covenant wasn't prepared for it, and they never would have been. Concordiat victory all the way. Glory to the Dino Chrome Brigade. With that, boys and girls, I hope you like this video. I hope you like this breakdown. Let me tell you, I want to hear what battle you want next. So smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And you know what? Strap into your crash coach, and we'll see you on the next battlefield. Peace out.